What are you doing, Mr. Wannabe? What are you doing there, Mr. Wannabe? I'm sharpening my hook knife, because guess what? It's spoon carving season. I'm Mr. Wannabe Homesteader, and today we're going to carve some spoons. These are the things that you're going to need in order to carve your spoon successfully. So anyway, okay, here we go. Um, I have a, just a general sculpting knife, which most of my stuff, or two of my knives are actually modified to work for what I want them to do. This is just a, a SOG blade that has all the little, the uh, used to have the saw back on here for like a jungle buoy. And I cut those off, ground them off. Uh, next knife you'll need is, this is a modified pocket knife. This is an NRA stainless steel knife, which I honed the edge down to be a single bevel. You can see right there, but it's a double edged bevel, double edged single bevel. And it is razor blade sharp and it stays sharp for about almost my entire carving uh, season. This knife you have to order. This is a Mora knife, this is a hook knife, but you need a curved knife like this in order to carve the bowl out, okay? Another thing, couple of things is when you get these knives, you'll have to sharpen them yourself. You're not gonna get them factory sharp like that, like what you need. So a DMT stone, which is just a diamond, diamond edge stone and then some 1500 and 2000 grit paper to really get that edge nice and fine. These are just redwood four by fours that you get at Home Depot or any hardware store. Usually people have redwood here if you're out on the west coast. What are you doing? <laughs> you just made a really weird face and like moving your neck around like you're... <laughs> there was... <laughs> There was a Japanese beetle flying around my head. Oh, tiny. You karate kicked those, remember? <laughs> Not when I have a camera in my hand. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, so go on. Go anyway, on. okay, if you want, you can trace out what you want to carve on here. You can do that. You can lay out your pattern, get something circular, and make how big you want the bowl to be. Uh, you can trace out the handle to how you want the handle to be. I don't do that because whenever I do it, I never really stick to it. <laughs> it kind of just comes out however the grain decides it wants to be. This is art. This is no, there's no real rule to it. People enjoy handmade stuff. Uh, a couple of things you need to know before you start carving. You need to pay attention to knots. You know, this is a knot. This is what not to do. You do not carve this on the bowl side. You want to leave that for the handle side. If you have a knot in the middle, it's probably best that you don't carve right there. Knots are very hard and they're very hard to cut around. So, and eventually they'll end up cracking right there too. So that just is another thing that you do not want. All right, here we go. We're going to start doing the blank. Look at your symmetry, pay attention to your symmetry. You know, follow a center mark in your spoon. That's how you're gonna do this. You're gonna make sure everything's asymmetrical with each other. One side matches the other. And I start doing the bowl just a little bit on the back side.
Now, I chopped it all off. He gets these big pieces off. If you were to sit there and try to carve all this, you'd be here for an hour before you even got to this point. So now, like I said, to use the same knife, and very carefully, this knife right here almost, it pulls away big pieces. Like, it allows you to get it, get it down further. Okay, general layout of the spoon. I like to cut this out just a little bit here, and you do that the same way. Just just take the knife and just kind of smooth things out just a little bit. And the only reason why I do this is when I go to carve the bowl, I sculpt it. I give it a general like layout, I guess, of what the spoon's gonna look like. Since it's easier to grab a hold of the spoon when you're trying to carve the inside of the bowl. Try to work on your symmetry. Making sure things look a little bit portionate, proportionate. This side's a little longer, this side needs to get cut in just a little bit deeper. pretty rough right now, but nothing that a little bit of sandpaper can't fix. Just want to make sure that you get all your high spots. Oh, I found one. Hold on. Just want to get all your little high spots there, otherwise you're just going to have a heck of a time sanding. That's better. No, wait, one more. Okay, here we go. Let's start sanding the bowl. We'll do this later. Okay, well, it's all sanded now. And for me, because this is hand carved stuff right here. I mean, we can make this as perfect as we want with sanding and going through with the knife and taking out all the little nicks and stuff. But I like to leave it. The reason why is because I like people to know that it is hand carved, not just something that you picked up at Walmart. I just do that just to finish it out just a little bit. Actually, what it does for me is it helps me kind of envision how the rest of the spoon is gonna look. But it's only finished with 120. 
I have to still have to 120 the rest of this before I can go to a finer 220 grit. And then once the 220 is done and that's the spoon is finished and now it's ready for oil. But till then we gotta carve the handle. We gotta carve the outside of the bowl and shape it. And we're gonna use this knife. You can go buy a Mora knife that is, you know, that has uh, a good blade on it. And it works just as good. There's nothing wrong with it. Whatever's comfortable for you, it's, uh, it's your preference. Don't take my word for it, but you know, give it a shot. See what you like. Try different things out. Experiment. All right. So right now I'm going to carve the handle. I'm going to shape the bowl. Get all this off of here. We got plenty of thickness. I'd say that still, even at its thinnest spot, it still has a quarter inch. Don't worry about cutting through the bowl. I've never actually done that. And I've made some pretty thin bowls. This part right here can be a little tricky to do with this tip right here. Just pay attention to how you're doing it. You just kind of just go a little bit down all around. If you try to go at it from one area right here, I've actually broken a bowl trying to pull that out, this tip, with a knife. So, and it's actually, just how to hold it, it's a little awkward too at the same time. Basically just take it down until it's gone. The bowl is actually what's gonna take the longest to carve. The reason why is because it's the toughest thing to carve. You can only cut so much. You gotta pay attention to how your thicknesses are around. We're just moving right along here. Now using the technique is using your thumb. Now it hurts a little bit. If you can get a little leather strap to go over your thumb or you can use it to push against the knife. After about the sixth one in a day, it kind of starts getting sore. Probably about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes to carve one. When I first started doing this, it took me four hours to do one. <laughs> so it just, you, uh, you gradually get better at it. It's nice and soft right there, but man, it's tough right here. That grain can be a little hard to cut through, and I'm really having to push, as you can see, putting a dent in my thumb. And when doing this, have complete control of the knife before you start carving. You see it's getting awfully close to my finger there, but I'm really grabbing it. I'm letting the knife kind of cut, and I'm pushing, but I still have control of it, so I won't go too deep. If you're not comfortable with doing that, guys do it like this. Um, let's see here, how do they do the handle? 
they'll actually pull towards themselves or pull in this manner towards themselves and stop for the handle or just keep the hand keep the hand away completely away from the knife however you have to do it so you're not hurting yourself <clears throat> go with the sanding now same with the 120 grit all the way around so we're nice and smooth if you have any high spots along the way just take them off with your knife See how it's kind of jaggedy a little bit there? Yep. Wavy. Wavy. Well, it happens when you're carving. You know, that one's not too bad, but if you want it to be perfectly flat, get yourself a piece of sandpaper and just lay it flat. Circular motion is the best. I'm doing a 220 sandpaper now, sand, sanding it with a finer grit. This makes it nice and smooth. My wife's telling me to smile right now, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. Dust it all off. Now watch the watch the luster of the redwood come right out with this. And just so you know, you're gonna have to do this probably three times because it soaks up the oil like nobody's business. Okay.
Usually when I do a whole bunch of these, I'll actually just take a Ziploc bag and just fill the Ziploc bag with the butcher block conditioner and just let them soak in there. Just because it, it, it'll just eat up the oil really quickly. There you go. Look like a Wookiee curving spoons over Look here. Look like a Wookiee curving spoons over here.